Angela Dong is a second year student at the McMaster University Medical School. Today, I will be speaking to Angela about her experience navigating this competitive application process and Angela's tips for future applicants who are interested in applying to this program. My first question for Angela is what sparked your interest in the McMaster University Medical School and medical school more broadly? Um, so I came from McMaster Health Sciences, which is sort of like a pre-med degree almost. We learn many things which are um, precursors to courses that will take in medical school. So I already had the interest before I even applied. Um, but what really got me interested in McMaster in particular was the fact that uh, it's still very problem-based learning, similar to what I did throughout undergrad. And I learned best using case studies. For example, they give you like this and this patient with this and this, with these and these symptoms. And we have to kind of figure things out that way. And our classes are structured around tutorials so we're learning through problem-based learning, we're creating our own questions, or we're doing our own research to answer those questions. And I personally align more with this style of learning than simply learning didactically from a textbook or a series of lectures. That sounds amazing. And what was your grade point average upon applying to the program? And also, where did you go to undergrad? Um, so I went to McMaster Health Sciences as an undergrad. Uh, I did three years there and my grade point average upon admission was in like the 3.9 to 3.93. Don't quite remember the exact number. Cool. And were any standardized tests required to enter this program? And if so, um, would you be comfortable sharing your score? Um, so I think uh, the only standardized test required was uh, the MCAT. Um, the rest were like, M oh yeah, there was also uh, the CASPER, the CASPER, which is a ethics decision-making sort of test. And uh, the CASPER is unscored. Um, so it, uh, you, it's, it's blind. I mean, sorry, it's not unscored. It is scored, but we don't know our score. Um, and my MCAT was scored and it was, I don't remember the exact number again, but it was in like around like the five, tens, I think, yeah, around there. Was there a supplementary component or an essay that was part of the application process? And if so, how did you approach it? And what kind of um, tips for future applicants might you have based on your experience navigating this supplementary application process? So the only supplementary for McMaster was actually the interview. So it was more like a verbal sort of supplementary essay. Other schools like Ottawa and UFT, um, which I also applied to, are uh, they require an ABS, which is called an autobiographical sketch, where it's sort of like you write down your entire resume, you find verifiers and referees to verify that you did do that activity, and you sum up what you did and what you learned in around um, a few hundred characters or less. So McMaster doesn't require that, but we do have the uh, MMI, which is a multiple mini interview sort of format. And in the MMI, you um, get interviewed by 12 different people at different stations. So the first station would be eight minutes, they ask you one question, and when your time is up, you move to the next station, there would be a different person, they ask you a different question. And a lot of these questions centered around ethical decision making or case studies or what would you do in the situation. Some also asked us for insights or pros and cons on issues such as health policy. And a couple of them were focused on teamwork. So for example, I had to work collaboratively with another applicant to get a particular task done. So all of these, um, I prepared for them just by uh, practicing a lot, uh, practicing for months before. And um, when you do as much as the, those as you can and you do it in a very, an environment very similar to the actual test environment, it makes you a lot more comfortable for um, actually doing the interview. That's great. Um, and honestly, why do you think the program selected you? What do you think set you apart from other applicants applying to this program? Um, honestly, I don't know. I was a very typical uh, candidate. I was a very typical applicant, really. Um, I think uh, the one thing that probably stood out maybe was um, during my MMI, which, and uh, my Casper, which um, a lot of my sort of ethical decision making and uh, critical analysis sort of skills were put to the test. So for example, my GP is like probably mid-tier for a lot of applicants. My um, MCAT's like 
pretty good, but like not like super, super stellar compared to other applicants. But it's in the interview where it was really my strong point, where um, I was able to kind of demonstrate that I can think quickly. And I was able to demonstrate that I can think deeply about particular issues. For example, they asked me about what are my thoughts on this course of action? I wouldn't just look at, I wouldn't just talk about what my thoughts and opinions are on this course of action. I'd dig deeper and always ask myself, why, why, why? So I'd look into the implications if I ever chose this course of action, the precedence it sets for my future actions, and um, all the people who's affected by me choosing this course of action. And um, I think like generally the tip I go with for MMI and Casper is go as deep as you can, like analyze as deeply as you can, because the more insight and the more thought you put into it, the more um, you demonstrate that you are able to uh, operate in a in a high fast pace but also like very um very, like very very critical thinking environment if you could go back in time knowing what you know now about the process and your experiences in medical school as well are there any specific tips that you would give to to either yourself or people that are in the position that that you were in um and maybe some of your your top tips for future applicants um, so I'd say probably I did a lot of extracurriculars when I um, was an undergrad and uh, looking back I probably wish that I traded a few of those extracurriculars and volunteering for more research um, because when you do enter into medical school it's research which is much more prioritized over um, club exec positions, especially for certain very competitive specialties when it comes to residency matching. So if I went back, I'd probably um, ask myself specifically during undergrad, uh, what sort of medical specialty I can kind of see myself doing, do some preliminary thinking on that. Um, and uh, kind of center a bit more of my research background or portfolio around that particular specialty earlier on. Um, when I was an undergrad, I mostly just thought about like doing medicine in general, and I didn't really think about all the different pathways that medicine can take. So I think taking some time to think about all the pathways, um, that would actually make you so much more prepared for med school. And that will also give you a leg up when it comes to, especially being in McMaster Medicine, which is a three-year program, which means you have less time to decide on what specialty you want to pursue later on. That sounds like a very, very useful tip for future applicants. Is there, is there anything else that you would like our, our viewers of this channel to know about the application process or maybe some of your experiences in the program so far? Um, about the application process, maybe um, if you still have time right now, uh, just practice your typing because for the Casper, you have to type really fast. And um, yeah, so like practice your typing, make sure you can like, you know, type as fast as you can and still pretty accurately. They still have to be able to read what you write. Um, I think in terms of uh, tips for people who are like, you know, to, to be pre-prepared for medical school in general, um, do volunteering activities in undergrad and preferably those in a clinical setting because one of the biggest learning curves in medical school is getting used to the role that you have in the hospital and getting used to how the hospital works. Like we're not just learning about um, the various disease pathophysiologies of the human body. Another huge part of our learning is how we can um, kind of be adaptable and think on our feet in a clinical setting. Uh, because you're a medical student, you'll probably be like at the bottom of the hierarchy in the hospital. Um, and uh, and there's going to be so many confused there's so much paperwork there's so much um there it's, it's a very different environment from an office setting if you're used to that so i think just volunteer as much as you can in the hospital It'll get used to how uh everything operates get um familiar with the roles that each person has get familiar with the role that you have and the role that you will have as a medical student and from there you can kind of uh, tailor your uh, preparations and tailor your readings beforehand awesome thank you so much angela for taking the time to chat with me today i think that your insights will be incredibly helpful for for the viewers so thank you so much again thank you cassidy take care